video you there, mate? I'm right next to the microwave and look at it. 300 to 400 milliwatts per meter squared. All right, there you go. Right there, 450 milliwatts meter squared. guys welcome to the show we are back once again the heads of tech live show today i have with me my co-host the lovely dr nora check her out on the dr nora's channel on youtube is that right yes it is right ash thank you so much for having me on your glorious show this beautiful sunday afternoon evening wherever you are today and thanks you guys for joining in the show today this week we're gonna be talking about some serious scandals <gasps> serious exclusives we're gonna be talking about some cool stuff like film of the week <laughs> joking around we got a topic, a topic in discussion. It's called, should you start a podcast or how to start a podcast? That's right. I've been tampering around with the world of podcasting. This cap's stupid. I know. I'm taking it off. <laughs> My hair is stupid today. Don't worry. And presents. What's happened to that stuff? The videos that have been launched this week. Arm. Oh my oh. God. There's been a scandal on the reporting of the G4 Mac Pro on this channel. Disgusted, disgusted viewers saying, oh, you said it's not the parallel port. It's the <laughs> B62 port. I don't know what port it is. Did you know what port it is? I, don't know. I didn't know what port it was. We were talking about that. We also have, um, uh, Dr. Nora, do you want to explain what we're talking about? Yes, we have got some exciting news for you guys. We, very shortly on the show, probably in the next couple of weeks, are going to be having a tech guru on the show. An actual head of An tech. Actual head Not of us tech. two jokers. <laughs> a real head of technology is coming on the show. Oh, we're talking so about excited. a former multi million. What's his name? Billionaire. He, no, he had his company valued half a billion dollars oh, and then he lost it all but anyway <laughs> at one time he was driving around in a ferrari how many oh guys out there in the world oh have done that so we're gonna have in the one of the pioneers of the ssd the usb is actually bringing in the prototype you know the prototype you, the, the real one let's let's start off with that story okay because okay, my friend here over yes. here dr nora she she's a, a doctor and she has some celebrity patients every now and then they come along on the show some of them love technology yeah some of them you know do some serious stuff and uh, one of them, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just show you, I'll cut to it, and uh, I'll explain what happened, is, is that okay? Yes, okay. please do, Ash, I can't this wait. This is another room, I don't like being in the public eye, and this is why, one of the reasons I've agreed to this, because yeah. it, it's not done for publicity. I'm in Australia now, I've been away 20 years, and I've come back, and nobody knows I'm here, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> Fantastic. But for, for the people that really have an interest in tech, yeah. this is superb, because I can answer those questions, why it was done, how it was done, and when it was done. This is with regards to the SSD and the USB. Yes, the SSD and the USB and the first neurocomputer in the world. And the first neural computer. And you actually have, you got the original. Of the right? SSD, yes, I have. The original of the SSD. Yes. Could you bring it on the show? Perhaps? Absolutely, I'd be delighted. I can't wait. And if you have any questions for Anthony, you'll be more than happy to answer. Absolutely. So in any direction too. Any direction. Yeah. So with regards to the SSD, the USD, the USB, sorry, everything. Or the human condition. Or the human condition. Fantastic. So stay tuned. We're going to have an amazing interview, I think, with, right, with Anthony yeah. very shortly. So stay Wonderful. tuned on the show. Awesome is that right? That is so cool. So this guy, actually, I met him in a professional level, but he was telling me about his story about how, you know, when he in his younger age, he, used to, he did all these fantastical things, and he was just so excited that you guys out there are full of 20, 23,000 odd so people out there are fascinated about the SSD, the USB, and he was like, you know, if there's anything that I can do, if there's anything that I can answer questions for, I'll be happy to come on the show. He said he'd even do a live with us, Ash. How cool is that? There you go, guys. So over in the comments, let us know where in the world you're commenting from and ask some questions about the SSD. PS5 SSD, how is it so fast? Would you like to see the original SSD prototype? I USB, would. the guy to blame for the upside down. If <laughs> someone time you plug it in, you gotta plug it in the other way and you're just so confused what's going on. <laughs> AI, this AI oh technology was being used on deciphering video phone calls. Over it, you can Google it, find it yourself. So if you guys wanna know some information about what's happening with the world, tune in, yes. leave a comment in the comment section yes. below. It's ARM gonna be dominating Max. This guy made his own friggin' neural processor. He said he ditched Intel and the people of the past and he went, oh, I'm gonna go neural. 
Obviously, it didn't work out in the end, but it's still, still to have epic. a company being no. worth half a billion dollars flying out to America, trying to get some investors. We're going to be telling you the whole journey of entrepreneurship, teaching you guys how you can get ahead in tech, because it's not just about creating technology, it's about selling it, it's about making it exciting, it's about making sure yes. there's people that's going to invest in your yes. technology. So if you want to have any questions, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. And how did you feel? How did you feel meeting all these celebrities that uh, you do in your job? What's you know it like? What? The, I've got to tell you, from my point of view, I'm not a very technical person. As you know, I it's not tell. my profession whatsoever. No, but you are too technical. Uh, like on a minimal level, not like you guys, not like yourself, because you're very, this is your kind of your major in university. That's what you kind of learned through your whole life. However, I have picked up some things along the way from you and from your YouTube comments as well. So I've, I've had a common theme that you guys are all wondering about SSD, USB. And so when the guy comes in and he tells me that he was part of this whole motion back in the day, I'm like, this guy is so cool. He is exactly what you guys want to ask. <laughs> So instead of asking Ash, why not just ask him and see what he has to offer? So for me, it felt like such a privilege. I'm in a privileged situation where I can actually talk to people and find out what their life stories are. And boy, have I met some fascinating people that one day we could just have a full on conversation about. But this particular individual was so game and so up for talking to you guys and having your questions. He was like, you know, if there's anything that I can do educational wise, I can show you prototypes. He said, I've got so many different props I can bring on the show. He was just such a fascinating guy. And for me, it just felt like, well, I've just got to get this guy on Heads of Tech. Just there got you to. Go. Just got to. And also you lovely listeners out there, anyone wants to contribute to the show, we had some amazing comments this week. One guy even worked on the Power PC architecture processor. Wow. He was leaving comments in the comments section. I was like, dude, let's do a Zoom interview. Anyone out there want to spread yeah. some rumors, some gossip? Let's set up an interview. Let's spread some technical information, some knowledge just to educate the world. And what is happening with our comments over here? Dr. Oh, and what is So we have got John Franklin saying hi. John, hi, John Franklin. He was dropping some knowledge bombs over in the comments section on one of our latest videos. What is up in the world, John Franklin? Where are you? Where is he based? He is from, he has actually told us. John, tell us. John, where are you, you got to let us know. Where are you from? And we've got Lechman saying, hey, hey, Lechman. I remember Lechman from before. German. I'm not sure if he's from Germany. Lechman, you have to be German. Lechman Cannon. Oh, uh, we yes, got a German possible. on the screen. But we do have German Zocktech from Germany. And you're going to like this one, Ash. Apple Tech likes, says, you are hot. Uh, is this official, official Apple Tech or just uh, this is a. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Apple I'll, tech I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take take what you can. What I can. Take what you can. Take, take what you can. I can. Now, speaking of Dr. Nora, yes. saying that she's not a technical person. Yes. Well, we got this guy, he's one of the inventors of one of the AI chips, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Well, Dr. Nora, surprisingly, she actually uses artificial art artificial. 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 Oh, she has to you know, be a pompous, you know, a doctor, all that kind of stuff. Artificial technology <laughs> in her workplace. I do. That's right. When you do, I do. Your cosmetic treatments. I do. I use an application called Treatment Pad, which actually yours truly has actually developed for me. And it basically uses artificial technology, computer learning, uh, and machine learning, I think it is. Computer yeah, I'll, I'll, all of these I'll, I'll show, show you guys. Please, please show me. There's one of the lucky subscribers. Had. Lovely. And now uh, give me a smiley face with a closed mouth. Yeah. Closed mouth. Mm -hmm. That's it. Lovely. Now, the great thing about Treatment Pad is it allows me to take the correct angles of the patient as well. So I'm maintaining an accurate picture. And the important thing about maintaining the correct angle is if patients are slightly malrotated, their lips may look bigger or any features may look slightly distorted. Just natural face to start with. Beautiful. There we have it. So we've taken our before pictures. Now it's time to get ready for the injections. Yes. Yay. Wow. That is impressive. Right. That is so cool. And what I like about this is actually you're bringing in AI, so AI technology into the medical sphere. How cool is that? So from a relatively naive technological person, you're able to merge the two together. So for any of you guys out there who are looking for inspiration, like if I have to say something, that, on, that's a big on, on a baby level, you can we can tell you our little story on the side. We were shortlisted for Australian medical startup. We were. The, the competition had to get delayed six months because of coronavirus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on a baby level, we can educate you. But on a maestro level, we've got some serious people coming on the show. Yes. So guys, if you're interested in AI, all well, that kind of stuff, let us know your questions. Yeah, and if you yourself have been developing something or you've been stuck on something, maybe just hit us a comment and Ooh. perhaps Ash can help you. Speaking of which, what? stuck Ash, on something. What? Over yes. on our other channel, X Create actually released a video called Pandemic Survival Guide mm. for Business. We actually dig deep on uh, my app development experience over the past few months. 
as you are, I'll say, business has <laughs> crashed <laughs> to the ground for the last few months because of, you know, the government shut down forced, what's it called, uh, elective surgeries, yeah. forced them close. Yeah. So there wasn't really much of a reason for people to pay for an application they can't use at work. So yeah, prescriptions went down. The whole story is all in the X-ray video. But on the good news, good news, as of today, things are not going down anymore. They actually went up slightly. So if you are experiencing issues uh, over here in Australia, great stuff's happening. People are filling up the restaurants. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's business yeah. is, is back. Pretty just, much, the businesses yeah. that are allowed to be open, they are open. And they even got like um, inspirational signs on the door. Like you got some shops saying maximum 20 people inside. It's like, mate, <laughs> you would wish to have 20 people inside <laughs> on a regular day. <laughs> so business is booming back over here in Australia at the very least. Let us know in the world, how are you guys finding what is going on in the world? I mean, this seems to be like, the media, the media has taken control of the world. Mm. Like, I, I, I don't know if you remember the start of the year in 2020. Apparently, Australia was on fire. There was, I looked outside my window, there's nothing on fire over here, but the whole of Australia was on fire according to the press and then the whole of something happened, something happened, and now something happening, something happening. <laughs> Stay away from the news if you don't need to know about it because it's just going to mess with your brain. Focus on your task, focus on your job, focus on your career because oh, if yeah. you start getting, I mean, you can talk I'm, a little I'm, bit about I'm, mental I'm issues, so right? with you, Ash. So today alone, so I had a shift this, mo this today, this morning, this afternoon, and honestly, Ash, what you're saying right now resonates so much with me because as a general practitioner, as a family doctor who's on the front line, seeing patients who've been affected directly from this, whether it's from their businesses closing down, a lot of people have lost their jobs. I have literally seen no lie of the, I don't know, just say I saw, just as an example, I saw 30 patients today. No less than seven to 10 of them had mental health issues regarding, related to the fact of this, situation because they lost their jobs anxiety depression all these sorts of things so it has severely impacted people on a macro level as well as a micro level as well so businesses have gone down and it affects people self-esteem their confidence they're not going out it's such a sad situation and it's more than what i would normally do on a regular basis so. which is why technology is important yes. i remember about a month or two ago i can't exactly remember the precise date but apple released a new ipad which was pretty much the rubbish same ipad that they had the year before except they switched the cameras anyway they released it we was like I'm not paying for this. I don't know what's going to happen in the world. But you know what? It's actually so nice that they released something. It is nice. They didn't, they didn't delay it. They just released it because it got people talking again. Are oh, you going to buy the iPad? And then they released the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Okay. It had the new Intel processors. Good job. But it just got people talking again. Like, you know, are you going to buy the new MacBook Pro? Yeah. I mean, some people watch some of my videos. Actually, on my other channel, x a, I did a, a review, a developer review of the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Very, very popular. A million times more views than the ones I get on this channel. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it was it was so nice, you know, just getting people it's refreshing, talking. Isn't it? Yeah, it's just, like different. It's a change of atmosphere and a change of environment. Back in the day, I was worried yeah. about toilet paper. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna start doing product reviews of toilet paper. I was gonna start doing giveaways of toilet paper. The technical specs, which one had the oh, better God. grip? And now you're back doing tech stuff, which uh, is what your heart is, where your passion well, lies. I don't know if I'm back doing tech stuff, but I seem to be doing tech stuff. So things are on the up. And I guess we've touched on Apple. Shall we talk about yes. ARM? But before you do that, okay. I want to say a few shout outs because Lechman is actually from Sydney. So, hey, Lechman. You're just down the road. Just down the road. Mate, good news. On the 10th of July, you'll actually be able to cross the border back to Queensland Woo! to visit the good old Gold Coast, the number one tourist destination of the whole of Australia. Everyone we comes need here. you guys. Come over. Ser it's seriously. so dead. I don't it's know. I don't dead. know what it's the dead. council's doing over here. When I, when I moved to this country, there was something called the meter maids. I'm not going to go too much into it. Google it. You're going to be amazed. There's this, 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 these beautiful, beautiful people in their bikinis and even dudes. There's dudes in the, the golden shorts <laughs> walking around, filling up parking meters for free. Just I making know. the place look good. They were wearing their bikinis or their little shorts, walking around. Everyone's happy. And the council, for some reason, got rid of them. They wanted to turn the Gold Coast into a family-friendly zone. Basically, all the people that moved here 30 years ago, they got old and they don't like that stuff anymore. So now they've turned it into family zones, except families don't come, and mm -hmm. the only kind of people that come, they're uh, bad news, bad news yeah. uh, kind so of people. We need tourists. They've we even developed special come. whistles to sell their wares, so we learned all about it. You know? This is like for another conversation. <laughs> for another conversation. Another conversation for another day. Now we've got a hello from Malaga, Spain. I've been to Malaga, Spain. Spain. It's gorgeous. Malaga, have gorgeous. I been there? I'm not sure. I went to Mallorca. Gorgeous. Mallorca. Mallorca, yeah, you went to Mallorca. Malaga is beautiful, I love that place. We've got a hello guys from Italy. I think Malaga as well. Italy. Wait. Yeah, you're, sorry, you're, sorry. you're gonna say someone's from sorry. Spain. You gotta say the Spanish language. What is the Spanish language? Hola, senorita, senor. Mamma mia. Que tal? Sofa. How do you say sofa in Arabic? Because that one's really interesting. So, what? Sofa. How do you say couch in Arabic? 
Okay, we're not wrong with people to ask. Anyway, but no, no, no. The, yeah. the same word, couch, is the same word inside Spanish. I know this because back oh, in okay. the day, they said, uh, whatever, they said something. what's next? Maybe you can let us know, yeah. Ajka. Okay, we've Ajka. got Fabio from Italy. Italia. Fabio, ben the moon Buongiorno. hits the sky Buongiorno. like the bigger pizza pie. That's amore. We've got a hey from the UK. Hey. Hello, sir. Hello. Oh, what is going on in the UK? Let me know. I, I just see the Daily Mail because she loves that, that show. And it sounds like there's a bunch of nonsense going on. I bet you it's just all overhyped stuff. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, the guys are in lockdown, like seriously. Are lockdown. you still in lockdown? I think they are. But why? <laughs> no, no, they have higher cases than we do. Okay, anyway, okay. Well, I'm not going to talk about that situation. Okay. We've got a hello from Indonesia. Indonesia. That is new. Oh, we've well, never what heard do they do in Indonesia? Indonesia? It's really beautiful. They've got Jakarta, you know, the, the towers. Oh, wait. Yeah. Is that right? Malaysia? Yeah, something Indonesia, like Malaysia. that. Let's, that right? let's know. This is the heads of technology show, not the heads of geography show. So if you tuned in about geography, you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> on the wrong channel. Let us know. Okay, over in Indonesia, do you guys have computers or is it like a big hut? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> it is such. Have you not seen the pictures? I'm joking. Around. I had a friend from Indonesia. Okay, go on. Very, very classy young lady. She was super stylish. She was really cool. And then I looked up because I was intrigued about her. I looked at the country and it's such a beautiful country. You know what confuses so me about developed. Indonesia? Okay, it yeah. sounds like India, Indonesia. Don, India, Don, Indonesia. So like, you know, come up with an original name. I don't know who invented which name first, but like, it's, it's, it's like calling myself United States of America, United Kingdom. Which is it? Is it the United States? Or, it's too close. Too close. Too close. So too England close. makes sense. Scotland makes sense. But if you call yourself France and then Frigway, oh, <laughs> I was going somewhere with this. Basically, I'm a bit tired. It's 10 something over here, but thank you so much for tuning in on the yes, show. Yes, thank you. And I'm glad to hear that Jose says that non-essential is open tomorrow in the UK. Non in the UK? That so, is awesome. So, so non-essential. So that means things like the clothes shop. Can I just ask something? Yeah. <laughs> as an employee or just a worker, how does it feel to be classified as non-essential? That's sad, isn't it? Oh my God. I don't know. <laughs> you non-essentials. You know. Get back to work. It's actually really true. <laughs> You're probably not on the highest pay grade as it is. <laughs> It's crazy, like it's... And you probably don't want to go back to work because wasn't the yeah. government giving you, you free money? money. Yes. Yeah, it's like, no. Nope. They're doing that here. They give you free money not free. to go to work. So why would you go back to and, work? And in some cases, mm. even over here, you get paid more yeah. for not would. working. <laughs> than you would normally. <laughs> I'm so sad I run a YouTube channel. <laughs> if I wasn't running YouTube money, I'd be getting paid. You'd be getting a lot of money. Oh, my days. Technology, Ash, okay. I want to hear about it. What are you going to hear about? Um. Are we still talking about this stuff? Technology. Yeah. <laughs> technology. We gotta get back into All it. All right, so Apple. Yes, they tell are us. rumored to be going ARM architecture for their new Macs. I'm talking about the MacBook Pro, the Mac Pro, the iMac, all of this kind of situation. And I don't believe it. Like I am thinking, you know what, Intel, you need Intel. Or if they're gonna switch, they're gonna switch to AMD. But just it is possible that they're gonna ditch x86 and just go full on ARM. They did it in the past. You know that I showed a G4 actually in my video this week where we went real estate shopping and there was this decrepit house worth over a million and inside it had this beautiful, beautiful G4 Mac Pro and there were a few comments saying, you know what, it's a special, it's a zip drive, not a floppy disk. Thank you for the correction. I got it wrong, got it wrong. It was, it was a zip drive, not a floppy disk. I was having a bit of fun there, but thank you so much for the lovely comments there. But back then they had power PC architecture and then all of a sudden they ditched it for Intel and all of the applications that were previously working on a PowerPC no longer worked and everyone had to buy a new Mac, buy new software and it was a world of pain for the first few years. Now people are saying Apple can't do it again because Intel have too much of a hold. Maybe the baby applications will switch over but the big guys, are they really going to switch over to ARM? Well, we're going to find out at WWDC in a couple of weeks because they are apparently releasing the first set of development tools to support the architecture. We saw that last year they released something called Catalyst. I used it. It was all right. It worked slightly, but the idea there was you could develop your iPad applications to also work on Mac OS. Okay. Now, the great thing Apple do is they provide all of these APIs and it should just allow you to build it on Mac OS, but the problem with Mac OS is that it was a completely different user interface to iPad. So the way you access the file system on iPad is different to the way you access it on Mac. So it's, it wasn't that easy to use Catalyst because you had to, on, on some level, you could reuse your code, but on most of the level, you had to go in there and write all the source code for it. Mm. But the development tools that they'll probably build up, it'll be for the unoptimized layers of code, and you'll have to do a bit of digging to figure out how it works. But because it's still the same platform, Mac OS, 
it should just be a binary recompile. And even when you go develop apps for Apple, they do um, a, a, they don't let you up, they, they allow you to upload the code in a way that's not fully compiled. So they over in their servers can compile it to their architectures. So right now in the current system, they can actually support recompiling the code on their servers to support different architectures. So there could be a way for Apple to allow you to just run the code, compile it in an unoptimized level, and then they will recompile it again to work for ARM and it will work for all the different architectures that they may support. So it might not be that big of a battle to recode your applications to support you know, the new architecture, but where the battle will lie in is for optimized code. Like if you have special routines that access you know, the depth of the CPU to do some special sort of compiling, some special sort of hardware optimizations, that kind of stuff. That will be difficult to port over to ARM because that requires different uses of different you know, flags. You will have to do different optimizations for the CPUs. But the good thing about today, and hear this out, you heard this here first, the good thing about today is most of the hard, difficult jobs, they're optimized for the GPU. So if you want to do a hardware, sorry, if you want to do a, a, a video export, a good application utilizes, I guess, Metal with Final Cut Pro, the GPU to encode the hard stuff. A good game uses the GPU to do the AI computation, the, um, the physics computation, the graphics computation. So a lot of the hard work that's being done in modern applications is already pushed over to the GPU. So the CPU is, a, I guess, for audio applications, it's still the CPU. So there will be need to be optimizations done there. But most applications, they use the hard coding on the GPU. So the porting is already done for that sort of situation. So it's just about the, the UI layer, the basic stuff, the Go routines, all this kind of stuff. That's going to be the CPU's work. And could that be ported over to ARM? Yes, that can be ported over. It just requires the developers to actively maintain the software. Now, I'm going to be on a, a, a story with you guys. But Apple have already started developers forcing them to recompile their code for the latest architectures. If you remember Catalina, one of the biggest negatives of Catalina is they ditched 32-bit software support. They forced all the application developers to go back out there, recompile their code for the latest platforms. So now developers, they're used to knowing, just like on the iPhone and on the Android, they're constantly updating their apps. On the Mac ecosystem, developers of the latest applications which survived the Catalina upgrade have recently recompiled their apps. So now, if they did switch over to ARM, a superficial recompile should be feasible for most applications. So it might not be doom and gloom if they did switch over to ARM, but it might be doom and gloom for the first generation because there's going to be a lot of iterations. We don't know what their idea is. There's lots of different ideas. People are saying they're going to go full on Mac Pro. The Mac Pro is going to switch over to ARM just like they did with the PowerPC. Some people are saying no, they're going to do it in stages. First, they'll release like a, a MacBook replacement. Back in the day, there was a couple of years ago, there was a 12 inch MacBook. It was a great computer. One of your favorite computers. You love that computer. Did, yeah. So th that one came out kind of like an iPad with a keyboard. iPad with a keyboard. Question is, will they use iPad OS or will they use Mac OS? If they go Mac OS, that's where the whole play into them moving into Mac Pro would come into play. But basically, they'll release a low power Mac. And then in a couple of years time, they'll completely ditch Intel and go full ARM for Mac Pro. And something you need to be aware of is that Macs, they already use ARM. That's right, the T2 chip, that is an ARM CPU. And they already have optimized software to utilize the T2 chip to optimize, to offload certain computing tasks. For example, if you're doing hardware H.265 or H.264 encoding, that is done on the ARM-based T2 chip, not on the Intel chip. It's actually offloaded to the ARM. All the, um, in, all the encryption, decryption of the SSD, that's offloaded to ARM. Security checks, that's offloaded to ARM. So they could also expand the range of the T2 to support more, more as a coprocessor. Back in the day, we had um, a maths coprocessor. Anyone out there remember that? The maths coprocessor? Come on, some of you guys out there must know the maths coprocessor. So maybe they could expand the T2 to T3, use more, 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 um, more, more software, more, more iterations, more tasks to be done on it. They could go in that direction or they could just flat out go ARM like Microsoft did and force application developers to recompile their code. They're already popping up warnings to some applications saying this application won't be supported in the next version of Mac OS. So maybe the next Mac. So maybe the next version of the Mac OS, I'm talking a bit a lot. You can jump That's in whenever you feel it. like. You can, sit, you can tell I'm getting tired from talking. No, you're yeah. very passionate. Yeah. I love this. This but, is awesome. But you can tell. But it's interesting. That they're already doing pop-ups saying you should recompile the code. So maybe the next version of Mac OS might require you to start supporting 
um, ARM or at least upload a version of the application which isn't a full-on code complete with symbols application but a kind of like intermediate version of the code that they can recompile on their servers and distribute it to ARM. Oh, that makes sense. Kind that's of just gave good, it a kind of breath. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, do you, so you obviously when when the new Macs come out, you're gonna get one and just check it out. And I suppose from a, I'm just assuming. I don't want to go near I'm the arm you situation. Would. You wouldn't go near it. Oh man, guys, if you are any professional, I, I'll do it for you guys. Or okay. if I'm curious, or if they do something amazing, they okay. smash it out of the box. I will be interested to see. I mean, benefits of arm. Maybe you'll have amazing battery life. Okay. Maybe like the good thing about rewriting applications is you get a chance to rewrite it, optimize it, make it work well. But I'm just wondering, so say for example, as a developer right now, if you don't have the access of the ARM and you're, this is really naive of me and I'm sorry no, go, if, it's, no, right. if it's a silly question, but say for example, you're developing an app and it's, you're not using the right, correct system, will that app still work on other platforms? Do you need the ARM for it to work? It's a good question. So yes, they're gonna, there's going to be a period of time where you need to be compiling code for both ARM and Intel. Now, this has already been done a million times before. So when you make an application to support 32-bit processors and 64-bit processors, you do that anyway. Okay. Recently, Apple, remember when Apple yeah. went with the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 8? Yeah. They yeah. ditched 32-bit. Yes. So previously, applications would be uploaded with 32-bit binaries and 64-bit binaries. And Apple would only provide the binary that's required for the, the app when you're being launched. So application developers are used to doing this kind of okay. situation as okay. it is. Okay. So I can imagine if they did come up with ARM, just like Android does. Android, do you know what Android does? They support so many different architectures. You compile the code just in time to compile. You upload it. You, if you want to use C++, you need to do binary compiles, but you upload the binaries for all the different architectures that support it, and Google Play sends you over the architecture for your particular platform that's being used. So you can imagine the same sort of situation. Maybe in WWDC, they'll be announcing the tools to support the situation, but the idea is you upload the code. It will support multiple platforms. Okay. In, in, in the intricacies of things, you're going to have certain tasks running really well on Intel because they'll use SIMD tasks or special tasks that are specially written down on the CPU of Intel and special tasks that are used on the, 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 the CPU of ARM. That's the intricacies. But on a, a macro level, mm -hmm. the code will just work. It will okay. just run slow on one architecture and it will run optimized on another architecture. So you go, go in there and you optimize it and you say like, if this is an ARM CPU, run it this way. If this is an Intel CPU, run it that way. If it is a CPU intensive application, most applications, like I said, are GPU intensive. You also do that with GPUs. If it's AMD, you use Metal. If it's NVIDIA, you use, what's that? What's the NVIDIA API called? Someone hit me in the comment section below. That, that NVIDIA, CUDA, NVIDIA have their own optimized layer of code. They don't use op OpenGL. They don't use DirectX. Again, if you want to use OpenGL, you need to write the code in OpenGL. If you want to use DirectX for Windows, you need to write the code in DirectX. Right. So software developers, the big boys, they used to optimize their code for lots of different architectures. For example, when I was working back in the games industry, we used to write PS3 and, P and Xbox games at the same time, as well as PC games at the same time. And you just have different shaders being compiled for different architectures. And the, the, even the architecture themselves, they were crazy. Like P the PS3's architecture, it was, uh, I believe, PowerPC. Uh, I'll, I'll, let, me, let me get that right. But it, was, it had like six different processors and they were like tiny, you couldn't do anything on them. I forget what they were called, they were, they were code processors and you had to figure out a way to split up the tasks to send them over to the different processors. I should have taken oh, notes before tough. I started. Yeah, that's but that's, right. that's the idea of application developer. The problem is, is the PC market big enough for this intensive development strategy? Okay. Over the years, recently, software development has become lazy lazy i'm saying it out there if you don't know everything's become a web application because everyone wants to write once and run it everywhere so they write it in javascript which is the slowest disgusting awful language it's not even called javascript it's called ecmascript java bribed them to rename them javascript can you believe that so it's a rubbish language i love it i've written uh, stuff in it great great stuff but uh, everyone's writing it in javascript and they just want to rerun it as a shell inside ios android and mac os so Will application developers go in there and optimize it for each different platform? It only depends if the platform is worthwhile. So if Apple release a MacBook Air, let's just say for example, that supports ARM, are developers gonna bother? They're probably not. Unless Apple say you have to use it as you have to use it, you have to compile your application with the new SDK, which automatically makes it work on a tertiary level, a basic level for ARM. So that's crazy then. So if they did say that, then literally what I'm understanding is that developers will need to use the system. So isn't that like a marketing technique to get everyone to buy their computer? Well, <laughs> that's what you do as a developer whenever oh. you come for a new phone. But the good thing about Apple is, I'm going to say this, there aren't that many 
products to use. For example, if you go in the world of Android and you want to get an, an app done for Android, the amount of phones you need to support it is mind boggling. You don't, you can't just make it work on a Samsung Galaxy Note because if you make it work on a Note and then you release it out into the public, it may not work on a Pixel. Seriously, the same Android won't work on two different phones. It may not work on the older version of the Note. It may not work on the different versions of um, Google. So you need to get a selection of wow. devices. Be careful about which one you support or you just release it get a lot of negative reviews and then optimize it as you find out. Like when I was developing yeah, some that's of the old true. Android products, that's I had true. like a million different you phones. Had, I'd run it on every single have. phone yeah, and every yeah. single phone would have their own version of yeah. Android. Like Samsung, they butcher Android. They put in their own one UI crap and you, you try doing anything advanced with that stuff, like accessing the video camera, doing all that stuff, it just doesn't work. Mm. Even, even using like <laughs> JavaScript on the phone, it just works in wow. mysterious ways. So application developers are used to doing that kind of stuff and the hobbyist developers, they'll just be happy. I mean, for hobbyist developers, since we're getting into this, yeah. it's actually a great achievement because think about it. The big boys, the slow guys, they're gonna be slow to support the new architecture if it comes out. But for hobbyists, you have a brand new architecture out there. You have the marketing behind Apple. So you got a new MacBook, it is ARM only. Mm. If the big boys aren't fast to support the new API, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's gonna happen? You can you jump can in, in and you can be the first application for this MacBook and everyone's gonna be downloading and buying an application. I'll give you a case study. So Apple, back in last year, they released an API to support back and front recording at the same time. The big boys, even at the WWDC presentation, Filmic Pro, they were on the stage saying, we have developed this yeah. system that allows you to record the front camera and the back camera at the same time. Six months passes, they still haven't released anything. The new iPhone 11 Pro's out, but they haven't released anything. Joe, Joe blogs over here, I come out, I, I see, I, <laughs> she's got the new iPhone 11, I spend a, a weekend hacking away, I release it on the App Store, and I'm one of the first apps that allow you to record the front and back camera at the same time. Months and months and months before Filmic Pro had it released. So I got a lot of downloads. I made a tiny bit of money. Thank you very much for everyone who, who bought it. But I made a tiny bit of money because it was a new business opportunity. Same situation could happen with the MacBook. If you don't have a Twitter client that supports ARM, release it. Obviously Twitter will shut you down, maybe don't do that one, but, but you get the idea. You can make MS Paint, you, you have a good opportunity. And the good thing about it is when you go in the App Store, Apple will probably promote applications that support the ARM architecture, especially if you're launching the App Store on ARM. What does that mean? That means you're gonna get eyesight, you're gonna get visibility. People are gonna start downloading your apps, you're gonna have investors running to you saying, hey, I need this, that, and the other. Other applications, they probably don't have the time to support ARM. They might say, hey, do you mind porting your application to me? Money to be made. That's what, that is inspirational. Too much stuff. That, and let's just get a bit of feedback from the guys All in the right, chat. Feedback. Guys, hit them up on some comments if you need any questions to be answered. So Zotec, Doctec, sorry, says, but it's a difference changing only 32 to 64 bits or having a total new CPU architecture. That's not only one click. Make it compatible with new CPU architecture. So he's saying it's going to be a lot harder to support a different architecture than it would be supporting just going from 32 bits to 64 bit. Yeah. Now, you are correct. 32 bits, 64 bit, just mainly what the, there are new, there are there were new instructions set in 64 bit. So if you wanted to utilize the fast parts of the 64 bit architecture, you had to rewrite your code, especially to optimize layers. So it is just the same because on a basic level, ARM and um, Intel, the, the basic routines work the same. ARM just has a, a lower instruction set set to an Intel. I'm doing this stuff off the cuff. I don't even do awesome. anything. This is awesome. I love this. This is just, so raw. I'm coming, I'm, so com raw. I'm coming back from memories from 10 years ago <laughs> when I used to be coding on this stuff. It has a much, the good thing about ARM is, because it has a smaller instruction ship. It has a shotgun, not stern instruction ship set. I can't even say these words. Instruction uh, set. Thank you. You're welcome. It, has a sh um, it is more efficient. So, you know, yes, it is a different architecture, but no, you saw that Windows went on ARM. You saw that every, every single architecture went on ARM. You saw that, like, it, it is an achievable. Um, achievement and you can have optimizations for example iPad inside video video on the iPad mm. it runs really really well yeah. it like if you try try using was it what's the application on on the iPad that everyone talks about it's a video editing application I'll leave it in the comments well, I don't know why Lu I've asked Lu you Lu there you Lu go yeah Lumia 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 Lumix Lumix something like that Lumi it's Pro. a, a gr but basically if you want to do video editing on an iPad it's very well optimized all that kind of stuff because 
aren't as good enough for it. And even some of the, 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 new, the new investment is going into ARM. I'll tell you a story actually. About 20 years ago, we went to the offices of, um, what are they called, Power VR. So they used to do the graphics for all the ARM processors. They, they became a billion dollar company because oh. Apple used them inside um, their, their processors. I'm not gonna say too much about it because we probably signed an NDA, but I met the, the CEO back in the other day and they were just a British company. They were really, obviously they got investment now, they, they got taken over, but they were, they were in Britain and they were, they were on the forefront of technology. If you ever heard of Power VR, they did the, the Seika, Seika, another master system, the Genesis. They did a Sega system back in the day and it was an amazing architecture for the graphics because the idea is they didn't process all the graphics at the same time, they did occlusion. So anything that you couldn't see on the screen, they didn't actually process it and it was like breathtaking, groundbreaking at the time. So they come up with innovations to make the architecture work a lot better than the legacy application. So competition is gonna be good. Apple are gonna force developers to support ARM and that's gonna be very healthy to make things faster. I'll tell you something, Intel today in the news, the guy who's responsible for the latest architecture of Intel, he has just resigned. He said he's quitting and they're gonna have to find a new leader for their architecture for wow. Intel CPUs. So things are not looking good on the Intel front. Does Apple really wanna invest any more in this technology? They've been, they, 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 I'm not gonna say anything bad, but you know, the 10th generation, the 10 nanometer process has been delayed by years and years and years. AMD have taken over the show, so having another competitor isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's probably a good thing for the market. Yes, it will be more difficult to support ARM than just 64-bit, but to be honest, most developers, they just recompile their code and they optimize later. You get it working first and then you optimize it. And like I said, most of the intensive hardware tasks, they are optimized already for the GPU. It's, it's known if you wanna do anything intensive, video editing, video encoding, and um, even CPU compilation, that's a CPU-based task if you're compiling code, but if you're doing um, physics, if you're doing anything intelligent, even Bitcoin mining, you don't wanna be mining on the CPU, you wanna be mining on the GPU. So the intensive tasks, if Chrome that uses a GPU, all the intensive stuff is done on the GPU nowadays. So it's a lot of a smaller hurdle than it would have been maybe 20 years ago. That's awesome, Ash. We have got some awesome questions. questions. So we've got some a uh, bit of feedback from, uh, this one's actually just funny. I think oh, I'm go on, go on. Read it, read, read it. I'm just going to read this one for you because I, I've been wanting to read it for a while, but it's just a bit of a, an icebreaker. Mr. TK, bro, can you buy me an iPhone for me? I'm a gaming YouTuber with 50,000 subs, but I have no good mobile. You got 50,000 subs with no mobile phone. I'm going to take a round of applause. <laughs> Everyone subscribe to that guy's channel. How He's did awesome. you get 50,000 subs? Love can you know. help a brother out? Send some of those subs my way. I'll do some sort of exchange. Actually, speaking of with, regarding prizes, I don't want to break the topic. Is there any more questions? There, there about is this plenty topic? more about ARM, so okay, we're so, going to get back onto it. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll jump back to this topic very soon. So soon. Okay, so we have got a couple of um, comments from Felipe. Uh, Felipe says two things. He said, we need a better webcam and SD card on the back of the MacBook Pro, please. Yes, I have agreed. A, agreed. I have a MacBook Pro from 2015. I'm thinking about upgrading it, but should I wait for the new ARM Mac? No, no. <laughs> don't wait for the new ARM Mac Pro. Don't I'm right next to the microwave and look at it 300 to 400 milliwatts per meter squared all right there you go right there 450 milliwatts meter squared
get that battery. Is it, is it back? <laughs> it's funny. Awesome battery message. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right next to the microwave and look at it 300 to 400 milliwatts per meter squared all right there you go right there 450 milliwatts meter squared Hello and welcome back. Ash has exhausted the battery and exhausted himself, but we're back on track. Ash, pop your microphone on. Am I? Is it working? Oi, what is Woo! going on here? Eesh. Ash, Woo! I don't think I've ever seen that in the history of lives that you've exhausted the battery. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> it's too much arm. <laughs> is it? Can you hear me, guys? Oh, we're, we're back. At we're back. We are <laughs> Sorry back. Sorry for the first long interlude. <laughs> That was hilarious. How did you do that? The week flies by. Like, like you want to do something weekly. Figure out, hey, let's podcast. Let's have some fun together. And we really enjoyed it. We love chatting to you guys and your comments, all this kind of like pamp, amped kind of situation. And then the week flies by and you're like, oh no, what are we going to do? Quickly, let's arrange it. You arrange it. And then like, oh, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do this? I start exporting videos to show in the show. And then, uh, yeah, and then this stuff happens. The battery is exhausted. This is live. We are it's back. It's proper live. I hope you guys. Thank you. I've got to say one thing. Just thanks, guys, for keeping with us and for your perseverance and patience because you did wait for us. Technical Appreciate that you guys have been talking to each other. But Ash, there are literally now oh, like so many comments. What was we I talking to, about last time? We are talking about arm. And we were to touch base a little bit on the guy who wants the iPhone, but I'm going to move on from that because we need to get back onto the arm situation. Arm again. Because. Wait, um, wait, wait. Before yes. you read the comments, yes. keep on commenting down below. We're going to be answering all of your arms situations we're gonna, we're gonna do it but all. last week or oh, some sort of week what video did i release this week you released um a video about arm oh my god <laughs> on this channel release a video just answering that guy's question should you buy a macbook pro right today or should you wait for the new arm macbook pro a video talking all about that and i stumbled across a g4 1999 mac pro and i'm going to be sharing this video with you just so you guys can check it out today and give us a bit of a respite after what we've been experiencing over here <laughs> So check this video out and be prepared for scandals. This is another room. That's where the grand piano lives. And oh, this is the, this is the review. This is the Mac Pro. Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Right here we have the beautiful Mac Pro 1990. What, what is it? It looks gorgeous. And this is the genuine Apple display from the 1990s. Fully on. Does it work? Who knows? So when Apple used to like to tramp stamp their computers, you got an Apple logo here, Apple logo there, Apple logo there, logo on the sides. 
This is the feature you get. Let's see what kind of ports you get around the back. Oh yeah. So you got Ethernet. I got what is this? Thunderbolt? I don't know what these two are. Firewire, these are firewire ports, USB, microphone, speaker. You got two kind of plugs here, one for the, the monitor. You got a big parallel port. Might not have heard these before. You got fan, noise city, weight wise. Much lighter than before. You see, it's got plastic framing. It's a beautiful computer. CD drives, floppy disk. That is the Mac of the future. If this comes with the house, I'm getting it. <laughs> it's all sort of about the Mac. Whoa, look at that. That is the 1999 G4 Mac Pro called the Power, Power Mac back in the day. And the scandal, correction, mm. I said it wrong. It wasn't a floppy disk, it was a zip drive. Thank you so much. I'm gonna get the guy, the commenter who corrected me. Uh, where, where was it? You can say some yes, stuff while I, I find will. this out. Whilst he's doing that, Zip we feature. have got um, Ash, the application for the iPad uh, is called Lumen. Remember, we were talking yeah, about that earlier. Thank you so much, Luma AJ. Luma Fusion. That's I've actually it. got that application. I'll be doing a review of that very soon. That is awesome. Finding exact, exactly wait. if it's any good. So there you go. You got Paulo, Paolo Pereira. I'm sorry I butchered your name. <laughs> My name is always butchered, so I, I understand the pain and suffering. You, anyway, he said, it's not a floppy disk, it's a zip drive. It has so many of those, 100 megabytes, 250 megabytes, what? amazing stuff. We also got another guy saying, David Bloyd corrected me and he said, that's a zip drive, not floppy disk. Zip drives were extremely po popular. In those days, I don't know. I took my glasses. You got off. told, Ash. I got, you I got, got told. told. No, but, uh, no, but, they, told. but these guys—they're very friendly. They told yeah. me in like in a, way a nice way to enlighten nice me. Way. They, they knew I was young and dumb. They knew that I was a poor boy that couldn't afford a Mac until very recently. All my life growing up, I would not touch a Mac. I was PC master race because PC master race meant I could actually afford it. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of money, there are no, a bunch okay. of people on here who are asking about whether they should upgrade and if they should so upgrade Felipe, to what? Felipe. Upgrade to so what? Felipe, Felipe, we were talking last time that Felipe we said um, I've got a MacBook 15 2015 I'm thinking about upgrading it should I wait for the new arm and you said no and then we're bashing hey, wait, you got 15. I would I would go and get wait until the 16 inch new MacBook Pro if you need to wait or just get the current one on sale good sales on Amazon on Apple you can get a student discount or you can get it refurbished good sales on I use a 16 inch I love it Yes, it is a bit noisy. Yes, it is all this stuff and that and the other. Check my everything wrong video, but it gets the job done. It works really well. If you notice, my reviews for the MacBook Pro, like all Macs in general, they've gone a bit like, uh, like I, I don't do that many of them. I still do them, but I don't really do them because I'm not struggling with them anymore. Back in the day, a few years ago, I was using a 13-inch 2016 MacBook Pro and that one was a struggle to use. It did do the job. I did do lots of stuff with it. I was writing code, I was doing videos, I was doing everything you could want to do with a MacBook Pro, but it was a pain to use. And then I tried out the 2017 MacBook Pro 15 inch, and that was also a pain to use. And then I went to the 2018, I was passionate about that guy, but I was still making a lot of MacBook Pro videos because it was a pain to use. I mean, I had the i9, and then I had the i7, and then I had the, the fast graphics card and the slow graphics card, and our fan noise city really annoyed me. So then I went to the 2019 MacBook Pro, I bought that with my own money, I kept it and the CPU on that guy burnt up on me and then I went to the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I haven't haven't really you know I've, 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 I've done some videos with it but I'm not really I don't feel the need for a new MacBook Pro anymore and I'm not really excited about the new one I mean the new temp generation Intel CPUs we talked about ARM and Intel and that kind of stuff they're not impressive they're power hungry they're on the old architecture I checked out the 13 inch generation CPU Thunderbolt wasn't faster like it was, it, was, it, was, it was nothing special for it. They're not adding more cores to it. It's still eight cores. Tally O, check out his channel. You'll probably have some nice intensive reviews and make you want to buy it. But for me, the current 16 inch, it works really well. I'm you know, happy with it. That, that's awesome. And, and nice screen, that, nice sound. That's yeah, it's cool. Awesome. And because um, Iman, 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 I'm sorry if your I'm saying your name's <laughs> wrong, um, says, should I wait for the MacBook Pro 16 inch refresh that might come out or buy one now? I'm in no hurry, but... If you're in no hurry, then don't don't bite, just wait, isn't it? Because yeah. maybe it'll have some bells and whistles that will be amazing. One thing interesting I'd say, and this depends on the economy, there's stuff happening in the world, but Apple recently hiked up the prices of their RAM upgrades. So prices have been hiked up. Now, will 
Apple hike up the prices of their new hardware that comes out. We saw Dell over in Australia. Check out that Telio's video. He did an expose. I mean, not really an expose. It's on their <laughs> website. It's official. But Dell's new 15-inch and new 17-inch, they are more expensive than the 16-inch MacBook Pro. More expensive than the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So there is a risk in today's economy that the new Macs could be more expensive than the current Macs purely because of inflation. Now, we don't know if inflation is going to happen. Right now, everyone's saying deflation, but if inflation happens, it could just happen like that and prices could go up. So that is something you need to bear in mind. You know, if the government's printing lots of money, that means money is becoming a bit less valued. So we'll see what happens in the situation in the world. Hopefully, there won't be inflation. Hopefully, they've just done the balance right and hopefully they won't need to increase prices. Yeah. But you, you'll find out in time. If you don't need it, I'd say wait. But um, Apple, they don't like to tell you in advance if the prices are going up. But generally, if you look around the shop, see if other prices are going up. We saw Dell's prices went up. So Apple's prices may go up in the future. That's just something to warn about. Really good. Just a quick intermission. I think the camera is focused on the back of the Mac rather than our faces. So I'm trying to focus that back into play. And speaking of what your advice is, actually the whole group is all saying to Imam Jini, don't do it, wait, 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 wait. And we've got a fun comment from Play Game today. He said, you don't need to him now nor ever at all. You're all victims of marketing. There you go. In terms of the refresh for the MacBook Pro 16. Awesome. Well. What if you you're running a YouTube channel and you want to get some subs and some views, are you a victim of marketing or are you using their marketing to push your channel? It well, depends on your situation. Smart, smart, and if it I makes like you it. feel good, is it a bad thing? Apple have an amazing policy. Two weeks, you can return your MacBook Pro. You can turn your Mac. I, I tested out the 2020 Mac Pro and the 2019 one. Remember, we had it. Yeah. I wanted to keep it. And then I decided... I could buy two MacBook Pros with this and it didn't run you know, faster than my 16 inch. I was actually happy with the performance of the 16 inch. Was I a victim of marketing or was I inspired by their marketing to make me want to create? For example, I never wanted a Mac all of my life. I thought Macs were for dumb people. I had a Mac when I was a little kid, the one that was in that, that what's that, Five is Alive? There was this awesome, awesome movie called Johnny Five is Alive. What was it <laughs> called? Fun, no, <laughs> Short Circuit. Check out right. Short Circuit if you never used it. There was this cool dude, he had this Mac and he was making this AI robot do some cool stuff with a Mac. The old Mac with the built-in screen, I had one of those and um, it was fun, it was rubbish, I didn't do much with it. Anyway, I went over to PC, PC was the Don, you could do everything with PC, Visual Studio, program everything you wanted. I loved the PC, I hated Macs, I thought Macs were crap and then one of my co-workers, smart dude, he was one of my mentors, he bought a Mac and he was telling me Macs are just, they just work. They just work. They're really good. And I was like, bro, what happened to you? What happened to you? Obviously, he was a smart dude, but he was also like, he didn't know how to use Hotmail. He was still discovering the world. He was like this genius kid that could program, but he, in other areas, he wasn't there. So I, was, I wasn't 100% sure that Mac is the right way to go. And I was like, Psh, go away. What am I going to do? I don't need this Mac situation. And then <sighs> Apple released the iPhone, and that's where everything changed because I was writing an application to support the iPhone, and that's when I needed a Mac. So that's when I went on my Mac journey, and that's when I discovered iMovie. I discovered Xcode. I found all the stuff. Objective-C, the way they write their languages. They use the, the bracket situation. I went Apple, and now I love Macs, and I hate Windows. Windows, especially what they've done with the latest version of Windows. Spyware City, obviously Macs, Mac OS is still Spyware City. They do a million internet calls, but it feels less spyware because of the marketing. So maybe I'm a victim of Microsoft marketing that I don't believe them, but yet I trust Max marketing. You know anyway, what? I, I reckon we've talking. actually um, convinced, or collectively, everyone's managed to convince Imam, I'm, I'm really sorry, man, Imamiji, and says, yeah, I'm going to wait. I know the 10th gen CPU probably won't bring much of a difference, but I'm sure they will fix more than that with the sum of the ongoing issues with your MacBook 16. Yeah, I'm not having issues with my MacBook Pro 16. She is having issues with her one. Yes. Yeah, that, so that's I actually a, want to know is, if anybody has this issue. This is a, an issue that Please, she, maybe you me. want to talk about. So every time, like, so my computer, my 16-inch, um, always crashes. So every time I close the lid and maybe the next day will open up my laptop after it's been asleep, it will literally crash. And so I have to restore everything or restore all of my pages. Um, once I actually had, like, it coming up with a fuzzy screen, so kind of like when you get the television and there's nothing showing, it's just like a grey, fuzzy static. I had that once. The brightness, for me, I want to know if anybody out there has got the same issue. Whenever I close my lid, it automatically, sets my brightness down to a lower level even though I've said I don't want the brightness to be auto adjusted so 
that every time I have to manually increase the brightness. Does anybody else have the same issues as me, or is it just my, my computer? You recently updated it for me. You increased you it's updated still, the software, still broken. but it's still buggy. So please, I would love to hear. We if went anything. over to the Apple Genius because our screen, I, I held it wrong and it, it got broke. They replaced it for free. We told them of the issue, and he pretty much just said, "Look, we can try to diagnose it for you, but it will take us forever. You're better off just." getting it repaired, the screen, and then if it still doesn't work, you can bring it back to us. And we don't want to bring it back to them because it will take two weeks to repair it or figure out what's going on. So it's too much of a, a downtime for us to get it repaired. I think it's probably a software issue. Okay. Because I remember I installed some Logitech drivers on your Mac OS. Remember when yeah. I had Logitech speakers, yeah, 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 yeah. the G, yes. the G whatever it yeah. is, and they had some software, they did some drivers. I reckon that's what caused it. I reckon it's a driver conflict. But it might not be. It might not be. It could be a hardware issue with her particular MacBook Pro. I've heard could other be. people say that they also experience the shutdowns yeah. overnight. So, oh, right. yeah, okay. I, I okay. don't experience it on my MacBook Pro. Well, I, I want to ask Lakshman because Lakshman is asking you, Ash, do your, does your Mac OS Catalina, is it buggy on your 16 inch? So what do you mean by that? Yeah, is you yours buggy, buggy as well? Because I would love to know. That's just a question that he's asked us. I, I have experienced bugs. Every now and then I need to restart it because um, the audio playback goes a bit weird. The video playback goes a bit weird. They've released new updates. And when I say every now and again, I mean like once every other week, something builds up. Back in the day in uh, my 2018 MacBook Pro, my 2019 MacBook Pro, I'd get T2 Crash City. I think that could have been maybe because I used an eGPU all the time. Now I don't use an eGPU, so I get less conflicts. Because I find whatever you plug in increases the risk of <laughs> your MacBook breaking. Now I use a Thunderbolt 3 display. Maybe that's helping out instead of my HDMI. So I'm not experiencing serious bugs, but I do get bugs in general, yeah. So he has responded, he says, my Mac was crashing on 10.15.4 on sleep, but seems to be fixed on 10.15.5. There you go. Well, you so updated it to your one, but your one still crashes. Still crashing. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back to the arm because a couple of people, still, we didn't get, we got still, before. So we've we been chatting have, for an hour now. Obviously, no, we, well, had we had half had, an hour of like technical, technical issues. issues. We had technical issues. And I think we've got guys, a different camera on the show. Yes. This, if this one breaks down, that means that thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> See you next time. But anyway, I want to go back to ARM because we kind of stopped talking about it. And there's a couple of people who are thinking they might get it. Some people might not get it. So Zoctec, going back to Zoctec again, I wouldn't buy the first generation of ARM. It takes time to developing everything running smooth. Same thing happened when they changed the Power PC to Intel. Then and and most importantly, Apple. Will they support ARM on the long term? You saw that Windows. They did such a big fanfare. They did something called Windows. Was it Windows Go? They did a Windows Lite. They did released a new version of Windows 10 to support ARM processors. And now, what ARM Intel computers, what ARM, sorry, not Intel computers, obviously, what ARM Windows computers are there? It's like it doesn't exist anymore. They switched back over 100% to Intel. They've even gone AMD. I swear AMD is probably the better choice for Mac. They're going up in the world, everyone wants AMD. That's probably the direction they'll go. Or maybe they'll just go and make their own processors because they've done really well with the iPhone. It's, it's, it's interesting because we've also got on the other spectrum is uh, so even though we had like thought maybe it's not going to be so good, hash hash or hyphen hyphen says I'm excited for ARM Mac. Mm -hmm. I think Apple is seeing that their most vibrant software ecosystem is iOS slash iPad iOS. If all these apps would now run natively on the Mac, it might be the best thing that's happened to the flat platform in a long time. I don't think the only reason for ARM on Mac is processor power or increased hardware control. That is what everyone is fixated on. But do you really want to use iPhone applications on your Mac? Do you really, really like these applications optimized for your little phone like this? Do you really want to use it on your Mac? Really? It doesn't even have a touch screen, these Macs. They will have a touch screen, then you have smudge, scre smudge, smudge screen city. city. Yeah. Smudge city. You have to get a farmer to come in, farm, <laughs> farm the screen every week. <laughs> Might not be noticeable on this guy where you put it in your pocket and you rub it clean every single now and then, but True. the big MacBook Pro, you really want to smudge it. True. What applications on iOS do you actually want to use for productivity? Like, seriously, what do you do on your iPhone? You check your emails. You got Gmail already on your Mac. What would you would you use? What, what, what applications do you use? What I use on my what well, my iPhone, iPad, yeah. On my iPhone. Yeah. iPhone. I mean, to be honest, it's just good for the go when you're kind of on your yeah, Safari. But what application on iPhone do you want to run on your Mac? Tell me. Tell me. I want to know one application. There's, you want to use your camera? <laughs> you got a camera? I'm not sure. To be honest, they kind of cross correlate. There is literally kind of... no application I can think of. Let me know what applications on iPhone that you want to see running on a Mac. I don't know any. Maybe games, but then. Okay, games. Maybe games. That's, that, maybe. that's not really the, the not priority <laughs> use case for Max, but yeah, okay, maybe maybe, games. maybe games. Anything else? Well, I can't imagine. That you want to use Flappy Birds or a keyboard. <laughs> you want to, what do you want oh to do? Oh my gosh. I, I like the idea, but when you make an app, it's completely different than writing a productivity software. You've got to get a completely different mindset. It is nice. You can write one, write once, run extra. 
You, it's nice that you can write once, run everywhere. As you can see, I'm a bit tired today. Write one, write, 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 write once. I can't even speak. <laughs> we'll get that. Bash exhausted earlier. Ash exhausted right now. once, run everywhere. But the problem with running everywhere is that it runs badly everywhere. You're better off just picking one platform, making it run perfect on that platform, and having a great experience on there. Like if you try making an application for Android and iOS at the same time, it always comes half, half baked. Doesn't work well, completely different UIs for each one. So you need to have the knowledge, make it really fine tuned for the application experience. Because the way you use a phone is completely different to the way you use a Mac. Mm -hmm. There you go, trackpad, keyboard, even this, the size of the screen makes such a big difference. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I much prefer my 16 inch than my iPad because the screen is just a lot bigger. And it's so helpful when you're kind of doing two things on the go, like you've got one browser and another browser. All right, iFelix has joined in the show. I have to say the one area I don't like with the new Mac 16 inch is the always on nature, even when you shut it down. The T2 ship chip is still keeping things alive so the MVP will boot up if you tap the trackpad. I miss the old process that the keyboard and trackpad was dead when you shut things down. Anyway, I'll let you discuss ARM. But then he's written, for me, touch equals iPad Pro, non-touch equals MacBook, and never the twain shall meet. So I prefer Mac apps coming to the iPad OS platform, but not so much the other way around. There you go. And Thank I gotta you. say, I feel he came up with some amazing commentary. He was saying like he prefers less radiation in general yeah. from Bluetooth, yeah. but Smart. but he's saying Bluetooth gives some amazing functional functionality for health. For example, he uses like a heart heart meter or whatever it is. Yep. He uses heart something, and that helps him improve his life. He uses all this kind of like Bluetooth gadgets that inspire him to make him want to work, make him want to do this stuff. AirPods Pro make him to listen, block out the noise, listen to music, focus on his work, which makes him more productive in the day. Yes, Bluetooth ra radiation could have negativity to his life, but on the overall, it has been a pro net positive for it. Mm -hmm. So definitely, great comment. I'll give you That's a an awesome comment, 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 comment awesome over comment. there. Now we've got going back to the arm again. Sorry, Ash. I know we've kind of discussed man. it, but I we're am, gonna okay. we're gonna do a few more okay. things. Okay, let's go. So. Um, Hyphen hyphen says, I think we're all convinced that Intel is greater than ARM is the same reason for PPC oh, over oh, Intel. Oh, well, that's a bit. For devs. So, so he's saying Intel is better than ARM. Yes. Well, I say one thing. He's right about that. Because Intel is everywhere on Windows. You want to get a Windows computer? It is Intel. Now, are developers really going to optimize their applications purely for that sliver of Macs that's to have ARM? Are they? They're not. And anyway, Apple have been very selfish with their ARM usage. They only allow Apple software to run on their current T2 ARM-based chip. They currently, they don't allow anyone else to program for it. So maybe they'll do some sort of weirdness where only their application, their signed off, ticked, approved applications will allow to use the super capabilities of ARM. And if you want to use the super capabilities, you need to have permission or they'll only let you use it for a certain period of time. If you ever use an iPhone, if you try pushing your application to the background, what happens? You no longer can access the processor. It's up to Apple to allow you to access it when you when they feel like it. So maybe Apple want more control on how application developers use your CPU. Could be good. Mm. I don't like rogue applications running in the background hogging my CPU resources. But it's a very hostile environment for developers. Mm. So unless Apple give developers a business case, they sell thousands and hundreds and thousands and millions of ARM-based Macs, to give them an ecosystem for them to make money from. Unless mm. Apple do that, if it's not just a fad, a marketing gimmick, then developers aren't going to jump in on board, the big guys at least. Wow. So Ash, how long do you think Apple will support Intel Max, assuming ARM transition is successful? That's from Lechman. Oh, we don't know, man. Four years most. Four, four years. years, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. It's, that, that, that's usually their depreci depreciation cycles. It could be quicker than that. I know when they went to 64 bits, mm. that was a four year transition. So it could be four years until there's no more Intel. That's going to be weird. Yeah, be weird. And, and the weird thing about ARM is that I love dual booting. I mean, one of the reasons I've got a MacBook Pro, I did the research, OK? I said, if I get a Dell, I can run Windows, but I can't run Mac OS. However, if I, get, if I pay extra and get a Mac, I can run Mac OS and I can run Boot Camp and run Windows. And a lot of people out there, they utilize the Windows portion, the pure Windows portion of Macs, having both experiences in their life. So if Apple went ARM only and Windows didn't support it as well as Mac OS does, then a lot of the business people might have to make the decision, do I go Windows or do I go Mac? And they might ditch Mac and go on Windows. 
And once you float in that direction, hordes of people follow you. Apple have been making great strides in the PC market, growing their market share every year. Yeah. Although if they switch over to ARM, this could be something that dents their experience unless their strategy is to just make the Mac like an iPhone or an iPad. And for professional people who want to get stuff done, that is a horrendous experience. Trying to get serious work done on an iPad or an iPhone is horrendous. Or maybe Apple are thinking in the future, AI is going to do everything for you and they have a battle plan for the next 10 years, in which case we won't have to write our own software. AI will write our software for us. We won't have to edit our videos. Maybe they're that much in advance in the future and that's where they're heading. Wow. That's, so much that's speculation. Exciting, isn't oh, it? not exciting. I'm scared. <laughs> You're scared. I want to, I want to, I want to, I don't want to let go of control. That's awesome. It's, so, but it's you, sad. So I've got a few, that's... I, like, we're, we're all going to turn into a bunch of dum-dums. <laughs> the great thing, like, it happens in all art and creative mediums. When, when the printer came out, you no longer needed to paint. Mm. But paint, you True. love painting. I love it. If I they, love it. Like, so don't fun. you like putting the brush on paper and creating and vision yeah, and true. the power and all that kind of the ability the to expression. have that creativity. Yeah, Do you definitely. really just want to tap a button and see a picture? The fun is gone. The creativity right. is gone. You're right. And a lot of people still want that passion. That's why artwork is so expensive. That's yeah. why doing your own cars, the old ones, I know Tesla's coming in with this electric stuff that has radiation everywhere on your face and drives for you. Great, good stuff. But some people want to feel the steering of the car. They want to... Yeah. I love it. Ash, you know what? I've got some breaking news for you. Okay. Our good friend Mohit. I'm just going to break this. I'm sorry, Mohit, Felix, and Lexman. I'm going to come back to questions. Breaking. Wait, wait, breaking wait, wait, wait. News. Dun, 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 Mohit is our wonderful police officer from India. Absolute respect for this guy. He has literally just given us 200. I think that might be the currency in his country. I'm not sure what that is. Um, oh, we got, we got a donation. Yes. Whoa. And it says, thanks for your contribution. You've earned a supporter for life. By the way, I'm with Intel on this thing, hoping for Intel to deliver a processor which can run well without the blaring fans. Cheers. All right, Mohit, thank you very much for your kind support. I didn't expect this. We actually got a donation on this channel. The first, actually the second ever donation wow. on this channel. Oh we got God. one from Talio a while back. I think um, I wasn't wearing any shorts and it was live. <laughs> And I stood up and he saw something <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I'll give you a five for that one. Mohit is a cool dude. Uh, he won a competition a couple of weeks back. Yeah, we had a competition. Did. Actually, I actually sent him the money because I didn't want to donate myself because I had to type in like my passport and all this kind of weird Whoa. stuff. And he actually donated it to the charity Aww. to help the coronavirus victims over in India. So a round of applause for Mohit. Thank you very much for Absolute that. Absolute legend. And speaking Absolute of the, the prizes that the people won, I've actually uh, organized delivery shipping for for the, the boxes, so we're going to be sending out the packages to Sydney and Canes, I believe, mm -hmm. Cairns. Uh, yep. That's going to Officeworks tomorrow, and we're going to be going to Ospost to send over the international parcels over to the United Kingdom and America. Sent you guys the tracking codes, so uh, let us know if, you, if it works, if <laughs> it doesn't issues? arrive smashed yes. up when you get it. It's actually really fun sending stuff out. I don't view it as a competition or anything like that. It feels like just giving it's stuff fun. to your mates, isn't it's it? It's great. We, we love you guys. Yes. We, we love having these chill sessions. Every week, um, Ash is just picks his brain. You guys get to chance pick his brain and give you this awesome and, knowledge. And people are just so and nice. It's so much fun. Like, for example, Captain Mohin over here, yeah? I was like, I, I went to him. I said, hey, just take, take the money on PayPal. Do what you want with it. I was like, wink, wink. You don't need to do what you want. <laughs> and he actually, he, actually he, did it. he went ahead oh. and he gave me a screenshot of his donation oh. to the charity just to prove that he did it. And Such I was like, safe guy. if it was me, I would have taken it. No, I actually wouldn't have. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love the love in this channel. Now, I'm going to go back to the arm. I'm sorry. This is clearly something that is a huge chop topic. Okay. Now, we are going to go back to, um, uh, this, I think, Eman Genie. Um, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, but he's my favorite commenter for this today. Can I, can I say one thing? Yes. For those of you guys who tuned in for tips on starting a podcast, let us actually know if you want tips on starting a podcast. Otherwise, we'll do that maybe next week or another yes, week. Maybe because we a lot of the questions that's coming um, here is arm-based questions. Okay, go with your questions. This one, this is not a question. It's just a bit of fun. Okay. It says, imagine touchscreen with Mac OS, hashtag Wackbook Pro. <laughs> I just I love this guy. Thank you so much. That was so cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, 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 I'll tell you a story. Sorry, sorry. Okay, this is the story time. Okay. Go on. I wish I had the video. I wish I took the video, okay? Not everyone uses computers the way you do. The way I use my keyboard and mouse is gentle, elegant, smooth, constructed, focused. Now, I've went to some sort of people in your field, the yeah. medical field, the doctor field, oh my God. and they butcher their keyboard. They're like, they really, really smash it down, okay? 
Now, if your Mac required a touchscreen experience, I can imagine them getting their finger, psh, breaking the, the screen. screen. They will need the Apple Care Plus 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 <laughs> edition. Seriously, you saw the dude, I right? Did. He was I smashing the keyboard. Did. I seriously like, did. Not everyone uses it the way you do. There's elderly generation. They miss the buttons. They do all that stuff. Yes. You know, I, I don't know if you're elderly or not, or you're young or you're a kid, but touch screen, they sound like a good idea for the careful, for us that still keep their Mac, Mac proxies. Look over here, I've collected every single box over here. I've got them on my shelf. I'm, you, you're proud of them. I grew up as a poor boy, and uh, obviously I'm still poor in the world. You know, how much do houses cost? All that kind of expense. Cars, <laughs> Porsche's $100,000. Yeah. So there's Crazy. a lot of growth to be done in the world. But for me, I, I, I love the idea of these boxes. I never had kids growing. I never had presents. I never had kids growing <laughs> up. I never had kids growing up like you guys. I never had presents growing up. I was Do you a know what? Boy, I, so I've got some news for you, okay, and well, it's another breaking more new, news. Breaking, breaking news. news. Wait, wait. Dun, 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 We've got Dash Dash. We've got another contribution of one dollar ninety nine. Thank you what? so much, what? Dash Dash. Okay, we need to flash some. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. I agree with Raj. Wonderful and lively chat. Thanks. You know what, Dash Dash, your contributions have been awesome. I still, I'm going to get back to what this. What are we going to do with the money? We are probably going to do something charitable. Like, we'll give back to you guys. We'll buy the new MacBook Pro Arm Edition. Awesome. Oh, maybe now. we'll send it up to our 100,000th subscriber. That'd be awesome. Or, yeah, when That'd we get to awesome. 100K subs, we'll give away the Arm MacBook Pro. That'd be really cool, actually. Wow. Let's, yeah, do that. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hold us to that, because <laughs> if we forget. Then... Subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> All right, we've got some more um, bits and pieces. So, Dash Dash, thank you so much for your contribution, has asked, we already have universal binaries that support iOS and iPad OS. Boom. If the programming is complete and only Boom. and updated UI needs to be included in the binary to also support Mac OS, it's so much easier for devs. Correct, correct. And they do have Project Catalyst to allow coding for the iPad and Mac at the same time. You do need the UI layer to make it work and all that kind of stuff. So potentially, it pushes all the iPad applications to Mac. But the question I want to ask you, what's the name? What's the... Hash Hash. No, no, is it, dash, is, dash. was that the question? Yes. He asked that question? Yes, Dash Dash said it. Dash Dash, I want to ask you, which iPad application do you want to see on your Mac? Mm. I know zero. Mm. Uh, there isn't a single iPad application I want to see running on my Mac. The apps that I use on my iPad, I love it because you use the pencil, you use the touch screen. There's nothing I want for the Mac. Let me know what kind of applications I'd you want. I'd love to know too. I Felix is back. There's no arm in Apple leaving Intel. There will be a five year transition period, but I think there'll be less heat from the 5NM chips. Question Is ARM likely to be more secure than Intel? And do you think Apple will be doing on the fly virtualization of apps before the code base gets fully ported to their new ARM world? Well, you saw Intel, Microsoft do that. They have virtualization to run their, their, their Intel Windows computers on their ARM processors and it's horrendously slow. It will be horrendously slow on the Mac OS. It just, it is, that's what emulators are, simulators are, they are, you know, you can already run iPhone applications on your Mac. I have an iPhone simulator, it runs everything, okay? So there's no, and it runs it on x86. It is a simulator, it's not an emulator, it's a simulator. So the difference is one, pretends to be an ARM and does it the coding chip by chip. One just runs it as a binary on x86, but just looks like it, it simulates it. So you can already do iPhone applications on a Mac. It runs in an iPhone simulator. Devs have access to this. I can show you if you guys are interested. It's been done a million times. So, you know, I don't see the benefits. The benefits is, is for ARM to use Intel's applications. So maybe you'll be able to get your iPhone running Adobe Photoshop, your mm -hmm. iPhone running Premiere, Maybe when you force Premiere to support ARM, then your iPhone becomes the magical device that you walk around. It's kind of like what Note's trying to do in Samsung. They have decks. You, you walk around with an iPhone, you plug it into a big monitor, and then you have a desktop. Maybe that's the transition. Maybe they want to turn iOS into macOS. Whoa, breaking news on this channel. <laughs> oh never, my gosh. never thought of that. That's cool, isn't <laughs> Just it? Just made it up. But back in, I used to work in um, the telecoms industry, a billion dollar company, and um, the biggest push out there was to turn your phone into a desktop computer. That's what we wanted to do. It was one of our biggest mission statements. So Apple could be the same. Maybe it's for the, the glasses. You turn that into a computer. Oh, cool. So lots of situations mm -hmm. happening there. 
All right, I've got one. Sorry, Ash. The questions more. keep rolling. They keep rolling, and I'm loving it. I hope you are too. <laughs> yes, I'm, of course I'm, you are. I'm, okay, <laughs> Lakshman is back again. He's got two questions. What sort of CPU cooling do you see Apple doing with ARM? And I was reading that the new 12-inch ARM MacBook that will come out will come with a butterfly keyboard. Apple still not giving up on this technology? Question mark. I, where did you hear this information from regarding ARM? So ARM runs really well on iPhone, but the idea of iPhones is it doesn't do long-term tasks. It's just short-term activities because if you have it running long, it will be hot, it will burn up and it will eat up the battery. So cooling situation, you probably won't need... <laughs> Apple have a history of inventing new ways to get rid of cooling. So they might even make it less cooled, less fans and you might just be having a slow computer what the idea is usually they have some fast processors and they have some co-processors which are energy efficient and if it gets too hot it just runs in an energy efficient mode maybe they'll invest in cooling and make it better you saw the strides have been done with the 16 inch they had a bigger heat sink they had more faster fans bigger fans Maybe they'll include that, but I think the push for ARM is to have a fanless experience. Back when we had the old mm -hmm. MacBook, it was fanless. It was just a heat sink. It was cooled. So maybe you might not need it. You probably will. But if you look at the Mac Pro, they really designed it to be acoustically pleasing. The fans hardly ever come on. So Apple, I think at their core, they want a fanless computer. ARM could give them the opportunity. So when you go fanless, ARM will give them the opportunity, but will you get the performance out of it? That's when AMD and Intel will probably be a lot more efficient. But it's just something we're going to have to wait and see. What application developers develop for it? So what can I call it? Dell have done some amazing strides with the XPS 17. I haven't tested it out myself, but check out Talio's channel. He's got a, probably a review coming out of the XPS 17. They've got a redesigned cooling system. And Intel, they've actually invested in cooling. They've lowered the diff distance between the heatsink and the processor to increase the cooling that's provided. So cooling is a big, big road, mm -hmm. road works for these people. So I, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm excited to find out. Apple don't like to develop new stuff. They just like reusing stuff. You saw the 13-inch MacBook Pro, a complete copy-paste of the last one. They didn't even bother to make the screen thinner. It looks like a relic. It looks, you know, the bezels look gigantic. It's nice that they went 10th generation. Thank God, thankfully. But you saw that the base model, they still kept their 8th generation. Like, why? They should cut that model. It doesn't need to exist. You got the MacBook Air with two ports. There's no need for a MacBook Pro with two ports. No need for it. But they kept it, so they don't like redesigning their wares. Will they redesign it for this iteration? Maybe, maybe that's why they held back the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Maybe the 14 inch MacBook Pro, maybe that one will have a redesigned cooling system and ARM. Rumors coming up over here, <laughs> make Loads stuff up. rumors. And I guess um, James Lindberger says, I'm not sure how to take this question, but it's, do you know what you're talking about? No, I have no <laughs> idea what I'm talking about. This is a theorization questions. We're asking for well, the possibility of Apple switching over to ARM. That's what the rumor sites are saying. So we're talking about the possibilities are they going to go? Which direction they're going to go? Where we're going to go? If you have any questions, you have any ideas yourself, please let us know. Where, where are you going? This is just backed from years of experience working on Apple computers, writing software for Apple computers. That's all we can base our knowledge from. Mm -hmm. so writing console, all that kind of stuff. There's always a new generation of consoles. You saw that PS5 has a new SSD. They've improved, not the actual SSD, the chips, but the, the coprocessor that processes the chips. They've made that one faster. Apparently Samsung is going to have that for the PC Master Race very soon as well. We're going to be talking to one of the pioneers of SSD on this channel so very excited, soon. All so about excited. it. That's right. If you, if you guys heard? have any questions to him, please hit us up in the comments below because we're going to have him live on the channel. Isn't that right, Ash? Yes. All right. So we have been streaming for 80 minutes now. Yes, I'm tired. Are you I tired? Think, I, I think it's time to sign off very soon if there are no more questions because I think we've managed to answer them all. Okay. I'm going to run through some bonus. Oh, no, wait, 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 oh, one second, one second. Oh, oh. This is a fun question. Guys. Why? Dash Dash oh, is man. an awesome contributor today. Okay. If you were CEO at we're Apple not worthy. for one day, what would you change? You know, it's some interesting stuff happening on that level of Apple. So Tim Cook, he is the CEO, but the, the COO, he's like the new Tim Cook. Now, Steve Jobs, he was an innovator. He was a pioneer. He was, you know, a madman trying to get stuff done. People liked him, people didn't like him, but he was trying to get the ball rolling. Tim Cook... He's kind of like an orchestrator. He is like um, getting stuff done, production lines over here, getting the ball rolling. But regarding innovation, he's more of a political leader than that. The CEO is kind of like a copy paste of Tim Cook. Now, Tim Cook, 
he is rumoured, I'm not just saying this now, but he's rumoured to be leaving Apple. We don't know when, but he's already like on the board of one of the top universities in China. He's already on the board of several, you know, he's, he's an activist. He's, he might enter politics, so he might be maybe a president, a senator, or maybe he might be running a foundation to support charities, all that kind of stuff. Push progressive movements. So the CEO, COO, he looks likely to take over the reins of Tim Cook. Now, you just Google this up, you'll find this out all yourself. The, C, the new COO, I didn't really prepare for this speech, maybe we'll talk about it in the next one, but he's a clone of Tim Cook, so Apple seemed to be going around the road of copy-pasting their technology. You saw that they tried Apple Car, they, well, I don't know if it's failed yet, but they pretty much closed down the operations, they got rid of the maestro, the, the inventor of the thin and light situation. What's that guy that does the voiceover? The voiceover oh, guy, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the designer dude, the British guy. Anyone that knows his name, let us know in the comment section below. Someone says Woz was the brains of the operation. Woz is, still, see, Woz is also an amazing innovator. He's, he's, he's a technologist. The problem with Woz is, is that he had a plane crash. He crashed and he survived. Thank God he survived. But ever since then, he said he lost a bit of his you know, because if you survive, he survived, he had a head injury. So he's still a genius. But ever since that moment, that's when he stopped being the, the, the crazy inventor dude that he said um, he used yeah. to be. So Woz would have been a great leader. He would have been a freedom proponent. Steve Jobs was probably the perfect guy for Apple because he was like a mix of both. He was crazy, he was innovative, and he knew design, he knew how to direction. Tim Cook is a great orchestrator, orchestrator to keep things going. But regarding new products, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there and the new elevation. Mm. It's, gonna, it's always political. Like mm. the head of retail, she, she recently left, she went somewhere else. So there's a lot of changes. Now, if I was the CEO of Apple, what would I do? Oh man. I'm not prepared for this question. I think the, the only thing that comes into my brain, I would break up the company. I would, mm. I would have an Apple HQ, maybe an overlord company, doing the political stuff that, that Tim Cook wants to do. But then I'll have an R&D section, kind of like what Google Labs tried doing. They had Google X and they had the Google Glass and all that stuff. But try to avoid the scandals that forced that one to close down. If you don't know, just find out about the, C, the, the founders of Google and the kind of dodgy stuff that happened. But um, yeah, I'd have an R&D branch, I'd really fund it, maybe even have a company that's not named Apple, that's called a different name, and I'd just start pushing out new products that isn't associated with Apple, and maybe the Apple car, maybe I'd buy Tesla, if uh, Elon Musk, whoa, if Elon Musk took over Tesla, that would be yeah. interesting situation, Radiation City, he loves that stuff, so Apple is the perfect fit for him. Maybe, um, I'd, maybe I'd make Mac OS, the, applic the OS run on PCs. Maybe I'd allow licenses because I don't think Apple care about the Mac anymore. I think they're a phone company and I think um, Mac OS is suffering from that. So maybe handing the reins to another company could be a situation. But it feels like their products, they're a bit, mm. they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't seamlessly flow anymore. They don't make sense and they've got too much products out there. So maybe just having different, different brands, kind of like, you know, you've got Coca-Cola, you've got Pepsi, you got yeah, Dell, they're kind of a bit crazy with that situation. They got Alienware, they own that, but that's like the gaming decision division. So maybe Apple needs to be like a television network Apple, a completely different company, focusing on different things. The app store of Apple, they need to be a different company, focusing on different things, because Apple, they have an agenda to push their native Apple-made applications. So Apple Music is gonna get pumped in front of Spotify because it's in their best, best interest. But it's not in the Apple Store's best interest to do that. Customers want the best music application. Customers want to find the best application for it. They don't want the whole politics, well, I'm just saying, from my opinion, they don't want the whole politics around the decision making. They just want the best for the medium. So the best for the Mac isn't necessarily the best for the iPhone. The best for the iPhone isn't necessarily the best for the Apple car. It doesn't need to be the same. So I'd, I'd think about maybe splitting it up. Kind of like what, what happened with Steve Jobs when he, when he got fired the first time around. He was the CEO. They made him the head of a division of a rogue lab and he went ahead and started making the Mac. He made the Mac in his own division. And that's where the Mac came about from. He made the Lisa in his own division. You know what, Ash, you, okay, I want to say one thing because we've got another announcement and then I'm going to go into, uh, come on, announcement, uh, announcement, announcement. We, we've got one announcement We're 90 minutes in. Let's and, make and still tuned got, in. I know, I know, okay. we've got, one second. So, announcement, I, Felix, 
Thank you so much for your contribution of £3.99. Fun chat. I think you both deserve a cold drink. Thank you. Thank you. We've been chatting for nine minutes. We've we even had for... technical difficulties. The camera's we did. battery. We did. This camera's battery might break at any moment. It, it might breaks. do. I'm going to wrap this up okay, because we might be running out of time. Now, we've got a couple of people who have been listening to you being a CEO and they may not agree oh, with you thank necessarily. You. That's, that, this, this, this is what you want to hear. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. I just want to say something, yeah? As CEO, I want to hear other people's ideas. There's a whole secrecy pack with Apple. We can't have ideas unless you're in a top brass. No one has ideas on the bottom brass. It's all secretive. They have all these different secret projects. I want to hear people's ideas. I want to find out what's going wrong. They are saying And then I want to fire you for having this. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got James is back. He says, um, he said he would actually buy Tesla, which is what you said, which is interesting. Um, he said he'd bring back Johnny Ive, but he did say it was a very bad idea to split the company. Um, and, and actually, Dash Dash also said, OK, Ash, we get it. You want chaos. Well, think about it this way. If they don't split up the company themselves, the government's going to do it. What is happening in the world today? Man, Google, they have YouTube. They have control of YouTube. They're pushing their own agenda on there. You've got Twitter doing some amazing political statements, stuff. That's unheard of. This. They're uh, fact-checking the president of the United States of America with their own opinions. So that is some ballsy moves out there in the world. They're not fact-checking the Egyptian president. They're not fact-checking the Russian president. They're not fact-checking the North Korean president. They're not fact-checking ISIS. <laughs> they're fact-checking the American president. So there's a complete political movement, you know, trying to control the people from a company's point of view. So the government's probably going to come in and try to break up these companies or figure something out what's going in the world unless they take some money in a certain way like uh, just Google Herbalife how much money the government got from them for not calling them a pyramid scheme 200 million so they're gonna do a backdoor deal where they get some money from these companies but if they don't break it up and, and how else are they gonna win because why didn't Apple car get released why didn't Apple car go forward because Apple is synonymous with iPhone and if they do anything slightly outside of the iPhone bracket they're gonna just destroy their brand so what, what was the question? Sorry. What it wasn't it? a question. Um, it was just more like uh, they weren't agreeing with you necessarily with breaking up the company because James said it would be disastrous for Apple. Disastrous? And why? Apple as a company why, why is disastrous? based on vertical integration. Okay, so I get it. All the products need to work well with each other. But wouldn't it be great if AirDrop worked with your PC? If yeah, AirDrop, that's true. It wouldn't true. be great for selling your devices, correct? Because the, one of the great benefits of having an iPhone and a Mac is that they both work together. Maybe it could be in a licensing agreement. Yeah, you're right, you're right, 100%, I, I see it that way. But I just think to put the pedal to the metal, to make Macs run better, to make them run more faster, to make them have a better development life cycle, if they were split apart, there'll be so much more innovation than what it currently is now. Because you can see the way Apple treat their Mac computers. The Mac mini, it's got eighth generation. <laughs> CPUs, they just don't care about it. The iMac, when was it last updated? It should be, you know, it, it, there's a push for, um, yeah. for innovation, but it's not going to happen because they don't care about it. It's just a side project for them. Mm. He says it'd be disastrous because there's no antitrust issue. No antitrust issue. What do you mean yes, by that? Yes, uh, Google and Facebook will have antitrust issue. I think people can't trust Google and Facebook. Well, antitrust, there's also an Apple. Apple control the App Store. They control who can release the applications. They decided that no applications with coronavirus is allowed on the App Store without their That's approval. They, they decide so many different applications that are disallowed. They, they don't allow me to make a development SDK for an iPhone. So, for example, they're rumored to be releasing Xcode for iPad. They can release it, but if I, as a software developer, wanted to release Xcode for, for iPhone or a C++ compiler, they wouldn't allow it. You're not allowed to run compilation apps on iOS. Why should that be allowed? Mm. There is so much, there is antitrust issues. Spotify, what, what's their big battle with Apple and Apple Music? Yeah. Why is Spotify yeah. getting relegated and Apple Music getting pushed? How is that fair? Mm. I love it. I love, I love this debate back and forth. Okay. <laughs> Another announcement. Oh, man. We have got okay. the lovely Lakshman Kanan has donated a contribution of two ninety nine Australian dollars. Thank you so much, Lakshman, for your contribution. Do, do we need today. to strip or something like that? <laughs> no. And another big thank you from Imanji, who said that he didn't know much about uh, ARM, but then he, he learned a lot about it from you, and he just wants to thank you. And he says, too bad I won't be able to hug, hug my MacBook, though. All right, guys. Seriously, there's so much to be learned by looking at the history. The past is the the, the, the designs of the future history constantly repeats itself for example every 10 years the market goes like this and back up again it's just constantly copy and paste the good thing about it is debate excitement there's yes. progress and the fact that we're talking about these issues 
is exciting in the world because two months ago what happened to the world we don't know but all of a sudden we're back we're talking about tech we're even have become the ceo of apple obviously i'd get fired straight away <laughs> because i'm not necessarily doing good things for apple <laughs> i haven't really thought maybe i'll think about it Let's and decide what i'll do i never actually next week. thought it's a good about question. it it's a good it's question a great, what would i it's do if i took over apple i'd break it apart <laughs> it sounds like you might it sounds like you might well, um, well like you know fiat they own was it ferrari or lamborghini they don't have Fiat Lamborghini. They just call it Lamborghini. It's a completely separate entity. All of the big fancy um, fancy cars, they're owned by the same company. They just have different brands. Who's that big pharmaceutical company? Johnson & Johnson. They yeah, own they all own the they drugs. Yeah, they call it yeah. different brands. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's not the best for associating Apple with everything. Maybe there's this awesome talent to be unleashed in Apple if they had kind of like a black ops operation where they could release stuff to the market. Maybe they already do. Just a sub brand where they can go forth and fight it. I know recently one of the CPU engineers, he quit Apple, tried making his own CPU, got funding for it, and then Apple sued him. Sued him so he's not allowed to create competition in the CPU world. Probably correctly, I don't know the full story, but Apple say that he stole their designs. He's saying he never, he's just an employee. But once you join Apple, there's no way out. So there's a lot of smart people at Apple just being forced to go into these secret projects that end up going nowhere. So that's a lot of brain talent being misused. If Apple had an arm that could release stuff to the public, you know, that would be a lot of, you know, without tarnishing the Apple brand, Apple Labs, the complete, maybe oranges, they call it oranges. Yeah. They call it, they call it um, grapefruit, grapefruit. <laughs> No one likes grapefruit, so they won't buy it unless it's <laughs> awesome. And then they can reincorporate it back into the brand. I think about how we can get more products to market without the whole overarching you know, politics that has to keep the brand the same. That's what I, what I think about. Oh, there's so much debate. I mean, um, you've got a, a battle with J uh, James. It's a battle. It's a battle. I like it. I like battle. it. Thank you, but James. first up, I'm just going to say hello to Tom because he's joined us from Bath. Tom, hello. Hope you had a nice birthday. Have you showered today? Oh. <laughs> from Bath. Okay, James, I'm just going to hit this one right to you. All right. He says it's disastrous because there's no antitrust issue. We got that. Perfect. Um, he said antitrust issues are legal. It means a company is monopolistic. Arm is risk based, R I S C based. Biggest benefits are battery performance and processing power. It will cause segmentation and sub brands will compete with each other. Uh, have a look at LinkedIn. A lot of Apple employees move to other tech companies. Well, let me ask you a question Isn't competition a good thing? If there was a monopoly, Surely that's a bad thing because that means innovation is stifled. Competition excites people. The fact that Windows 10 is improved. Who's getting on Windows 10? Who's on normal Mac OS? They're just copying each other. There's a backdoor deal saying we're going to call our, our Windows version 10 and we're going to call our Mac OS version. <laughs> anyway, what's going on? What's, what's, what's Samsung Note, they, they're calling the, the iPhone 11 and then Note said, oh, we're going to go with the, the Samsung S20. There's a, competition is good. It pushes people to, to improve. But sometimes competition stifles each other and they just end up just making nothing. So there needs to be more innovation there. So I don't think competition is a bad thing. If anything, it pushes innovation forward. So that's what I've got to say about that. He says absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, so absolutely that, agrees. So that, awesome. So that is it. We, awesome. we have talked a lot about it, something longer than I thought I talked to you about. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not feeling the best today. As you can see, I mumbled and I stumbled. Even the camera ran out of battery, <laughs> all this stuff. So we're going to be ending the show today. And to answer the question that we also have on this um, the show that no one's interested in, should you start a podcast? I'd say why not? It is a hell of a laugh. Look, we're, just, we're chatting to you guys over there. Interactive yes. chat. I'm not right. You know, you guys are right. Whoever it is, we're, we're learning from each other. And I should have prepared a bit more for this chat. I didn't realize it was going there. But most importantly of all, we're going to be talking about, before we go. Yes, tell us. Film of the week. Yes. Every week on love this it. show to, to end it out. We'll tell you about the films we've been watching this week. And I, I don't know if you want to give, what, what film do you want to give this no, week? No, no, you, you, you do it. You do it. So there is, there's two films I want to mention. It's not a tie, but the first film, the actual winner of film of the week. And it made us both cry. I actually saw this film before about 10 years ago, but I knew, I knew about it, but I forgot the storyline, but I rewatched it. I rewatched it in its original Italian with subtitles, mm -hmm. and we recommend you watch no, the original great. version because the dubbed version is slightly tweaked, so not, not original. And it is, if you can guess, it's called Life is Beautiful. It actually won an Oscar, uh, even though it was written in Italian, or you know, acted out in Italian. Check it out, it's a great film, very beautiful. Yes. We were both just oh. like, <laughs> We were just like trying to hold our tears back. It was, it's a very, very beautiful film. So if you're looking for something 
It's a good. I'm not gonna not gonna spoil it all, but if you've seen it and you like it, you make sure you leave it in the comments below. Well. And number two, I gave a shout out. It's my boy Rapping Hoods. Remember oh, Rapping? I, I told you once. Now I'm telling you twice. Don't push for the foot because that's not that. Who's not that? It's a great film. Love it, it. it got like really low scores on IMDb, but it's honestly a beautiful film. It's about you know the poor people and the rich people, equality, all that kind of stuff. You know, and rapping it's, and it's, love. Very, and there's a lot of PC pushing, right pushing into topical. it, but the, the actor is great. It's a, it's a great, great film. So there's two oh, I films. I love it. Jonathan. And you've got some, um, some actually some good things for happening on the chat. So James actually said, good choice with Life is Beautiful. Yeah, it's a great choice. One. It's better than The Pianist, it. better than all the other films about the, that topic. It's, it's, it's number one. It's, it's very, very beautiful. It's awesome. Very, very beautiful. Ash, question. Everybody really wants you to be going live streaming at WWDC, please. That's what they're saying. Okay, I, I can try my best. Last time we tried live streaming an Apple event, um, YouTube banned us from live streaming. <laughs> they took us down. <laughs> Said you're not allowed, <laughs> not allowed to do this stuff. We'll see. It, it, it was working well. Like we was live streaming, everyone was going well. But then as soon as I made fun of the Apple Game Store, that's when my stream got cut. I don't know if someone was watching it and they realized I wasn't saying, wow, this is amazing. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I'll see if I can. It'll be very interesting to see what happens in a day. All right, I'll try to do my notes and rehearsals and all that kind of stuff, figure out what's going on. Love it. Ash, what a fantastic show today. Should thank you so show? much. You were great. Everyone has loved, it, has loved this conversation. Um, everyone's saying thank you. Um, we're James saying thank you. Thank you for no, talking no, to thank, you both. Thank you, guys. You guys have some amazing opinions awesome. out there. I love it. Uh, yeah, thank great. you so much. So all this kind of like back and forth debate is very interesting. Oh, the good great. thing about it is... We're excited about what's going to happen next. We're, we're fans. We're, we're enthusiasts. How do I have to say it? I can't I'm trying to practice Yeah, we're well, enthusiasts about this topic. Cars, people love cars. We love Apple. We love computers. We love technology. It's just a laugh hanging out together. I don't have friends in real life, so hanging out Aww. with you guys is so much fun. It was fun. If you guys haven't seen it already, check out our, um, we did a video about a Bluetooth speaker this week. We just did a video about ARM and Macs, why you shouldn't wait for the ARM-based MacBook Pro, because it's going to be first generation pain and city. Don't do that. Just buy something good for the show. And Siri has been activated also on our <laughs> channel, Xcreate. We released a video about how the app development business models have been affected by coronavirus. Real use cases on there. Over on Dr. Nora's channel, she actually did a, a live live treatment. She injected my face with Botox. It was all live. You can check it out on the show. She's just released a video about how she uses artificial intelligence doing lip fillers. So make sure you check out those channels. Check it out. And hope you guys enjoyed the show. Woo! Thank you so much. No hard feelings, James. You're awesome.